And the most important game on Texas A&M's schedule is Auburn. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. So, and we've discussed this a little bit, but I think, you know, I was sitting and I was thinking the most important game for the Aggies is Auburn. And the reason I've kind of pivoted on this is because at first, you know, we thought it's either Notre Dame, Missouri, LSU, or Texas. And all of those games are important. But I think that Auburn and then a step below that, Florida, are the most important games on the schedule. If Texas A&M can win both of those football games, the path to nine wins is there. It, it becomes wide open because the rest of your road games are pretty simple road games. Now, once again, it's still an SEC. You're still playing SEC teams on the road. That's never a fun thing, but that's the whole benefit of this schedule Texas St. M's playing that we've discussed for a few weeks, few months now is it's manageable. You play your difficult games at home, your more simple games on the road. But I think that two games that I'm projecting to be simple games on the road, maybe won't be with Auburn and Florida because, you know, Auburn's in year two of Hugh Freeze. I don't think last year went the way Hugh Freeze would have wanted, Auburn would have wanted, but I still think that Auburn, they brought in a lot of talent. They brought in a lot of talent at positions of need. They went and got receivers, which was like they couldn't get anything going in the passing game last year. Now they have some receivers, still freshmen, but could these kids be stars early? Uh, Cam Coleman, one of them, former Texas A&M commit. Um, but that's kind of my thought here. And playing in Auburn, it, it's a tough place to play. Right up there with playing in Kyle Field, it's not an easy place to play. Folks are loud, pretty good environment there. Tough place to win. So I kind of think that winning in Auburn – can make or break the season. If you go to and we're going to talk about Florida too, because those are the two games. We're also going to talk about the basketball game against Kentucky and the baseball series in segments two and three. So if you're uh, re- waiting for that, it'll be here soon. Um, but, you know, playing in the swamp is never easy also. I mean, it's just not. Playing in the swamp is not an easy place to play. Playing in Auburn is not an easy place to play. But – I, I think that Texas A&M is going to have a better football team than these two teams. I really do. I think um, I think they are. So the question is going to be, can you go and win on the road in two tough environments? And that's going to be what makes or breaks this coaching staff, what makes or breaks this you know tenure. Coach Fisher was not doing a good job winning football games on the road. You know, there was the stat, whatever the stat was, it's like, he hasn't won a ranked road game or something since 27, whatever it was. It was like the, the stat was crazy. And to be successful at Texas A&M, you have to win these road games, these, these ranked road games against quality opponents. So I think that is going to be an interesting, you know, an interesting part of the season is in, in like, could Auburn potentially be ranked at that point in the season? I don't think Florida at any point will be ranked. I think Florida is going to be kind of a fine football team, good, not great. But I think that they are going to, you know, their schedule is insane, as I've talked about time and time again. Their schedule is nuts. So I think that if you're Texas A&M, you – are going to be able to because that's when you you know that's one of your earlier games in the season. I think that you're going to be able to kind of pick on that team, not really having an identity yet. They're kind of getting beat up. Auburn 
if they hit, if they're starting to figure it out, that's one of your later games in the season. So I don't love that. I don't love the thought of letting Auburn get hot. I think you got Auburn at a good time last year. Now you got to play them in Kyle Field, which is different than having to play them on the road. But playing, I don't like when you're playing Auburn in the season because I do think that they'll start to figure it out. And once again, like they just they just find a way to win football games in that stadium. I don't know what it is. You know, there just seems to be some kind of voodoo magic about playing there. And you know, that's kind of just going to be interesting is can Texas A&M go and win in a tough road environment? I think that's going to make or break this season. And this coaching staff, you have to be able to win road games in this conference to succeed as a staff or, or you won't be able to do it. This is one of the easiest schedules Elko's ever going to have, ever going to have when it comes to road games. So take advantage of it. Win the tough road games, Auburn, Florida. If you do that... You can win nine games this season. I've talked about, I think that you are going to pull off one upset at home, whether it's Notre Dame, Missouri, Texas, LSU, you're going to pull off an upset at home. I think the rest of your road games are manageable. I think the rest of your, um, yeah, I think the rest of your road games are manageable. I think the rest of your games um, at home are obviously, your your non-conference games aren't that bad. The key is going to be, can you, Take care of business against Auburn and Florida. If you can take care of business against Auburn and Florida, there's no doubt in my mind that you can win nine football games because I really do feel confident you're going to pull off an upset at home. So when it comes to Auburn as a team, you know, it sounds like that Thorn kid is going to be their quarterback again, and he is just not good. I mean, quarterback play, as we know, is everything in college football. It's everything. If you don't have solid quarterback play, you are not going to be a successful football team. And I don't think this Peyton Thorne kid is the answer. Just don't think he's very good. So it's going to be interesting to see how Auburn plays, how, how this season looks with them. You know, they've got that running back back. They've got the linebacker that uh, Jimbo Fisher almost took out last year back. So they've got some – They've got some talented football players coming back. I just don't think they uh, – I said last year, I think Hugh Freeze is going to be successful at Auburn, and I do. But I still don't think it's this year. I think it's next year that that's going to kind of hit. So it's going to be interesting to see what team shows up. You know I mean? And that's what I'm saying. I don't like when you catch them in the season. I don't like that one bit. I think catching them earlier in the season would be a little bit better because I do think Auburn's a team that kind of does tend to heat up toward the end of the year once they've kind of found their identity and who they are as a football team. So, I mean, that's kind of my thoughts here is I would just say you need to find a way to Take care of these two games. You can win nine football games. Imagine that, a nine-win season. And it's very, very, very much possible if you just win these two games. In Florida, you know, they got a – I mean, are they going to have a quarterback battle there? Is that five-star freshman going to come in and potentially play? That's going to be interesting. I still think that – I still think that they end up going with their guy there from last year. But, I mean, they have a five-star on the roster. You might as well think about using them. So – and then Auburn also, you know, they've got the quarterback issues. Could it kind of derail? And then when it comes to this game, they've got – do they have to start a young guy or do they have to, to pivot at the quarterback position? Because we all watched Peyton Thorne kid play in Kyle Field last year. He was awful. I mean, he's not a good quarterback. I don't, I don't see it with him. I don't see the appeal there. I don't get what – I don't get the plan with that kid. I don't think he's very good, and I think that you can have good receivers. You can have good offensive line play. You can have good running back. You can have good defense, but if you don't have the quarterback play, you can't win football games, and I kind of think that's why the Aggies are going to be able to take down the Auburn Tigers, but if you win these two games, I really do feel confident Texas A&M wins nine games. You guaranteed to win eight because I think there's not another loss on the schedule besides those four games we discussed. If you take care of business in these two, your chances of winning nine games skyrocket. The Auburn game, which I think is the more difficult of these two games, is the most important game of the season because if you win this one, 
I think you are in position to win nine football games. We're going to talk a little bit about Texas A&M's win over Ole Miss at the SEC tournament and preview the Kentucky game. We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% cash with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as a Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good, in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker dealer. Also want to tell you about our friends with the Amazon Fire TV and then the Fire TV channels. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire TV Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Oh. I lost my thing. Fire TV created TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues in college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV. Check out, check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Texas A&M gets the job done against Ole Miss, 80-71, to move on to Friday in the SEC tournament and set up a matchup with the Kentucky Wildcats. So in this game, it was closer than I thought it was going to be, in all honesty, and then Ole Miss decides to start just cannon threes late to make this thing really interesting. Texas A&M did a good job extending and getting the lead back late to walk away with this win because, goodness, it sure did get stressful there for a little bit. But – Wade Taylor has 20 points. Another inefficient night, 5 of 15. Same thing for Boots and Manny uh, Obaseki, in all honesty. Boots is 4 for 16. Manny's 5 for 12. It wasn't a very efficient night, but, you know, 20 for Wade, 18 for Boots, and then 12 for Manny. The MVP of the game, by far, by a mile, was Anderson Garcia. 11 points and 14 rebounds, 8 offensive rebounds, and he was 4 of 5 from the field. You'll take that all day long. A double-double, second-chance points, um, a lot of opportunities for, you know, opportunities for second-chance points, but just extra possessions. Extra possessions are what win you basketball games, and that was the case in this game. You know, Garcia continues to rip down offensive boards. Texas a does as a whole. It was really huge in this game. I mean, Garcia, and it seems like, Every time he seems like he makes big plays and big moments too. It's like he's always where he needs to be, making the right decision, making smart plays. Garcia um, made a made some great great plays for this team right now. As we said, I'm recording this at 7:30. As we sit, 7:22 technically, Texas A&M is on the right side of the bubble. I think a win today locks you in. 
it just depends what how much Lenardi puts in to the SEC tournament. And it's like, and once again, Lenardi is not the gospel. He's not the end all be all on this. But I do think that you want to be on the right side of the bubble. Regardless of what happens, selection Sunday is going to be stressful. You know, there's no, I think that a win today over Kentucky would make you feel better. But selection Sunday is going to be very stressful. There's no, that's just reality. It's going to be stressful. So, you know, I think that you got to try and beat a red hot Kentucky team a team that is much, much different from the team that came to Reed Arena a few months ago. I think uh, I'm going to beat this game. I'm looking forward to it. And I think, you know, who played well last time when these two teams met? It was Boots and it was Wade Taylor. And I think they got to play well again. I think your stars and your veterans need to show up. Now, I'd love to get a double-double from Garcia and 12, 15 efficient points from Manny um, Obaseki as well. But I still think – oh, and um, Solomon Washington had 13 points, by the way, and nine rebounds against, um, against Ole Miss. I wrote that down. I forgot to mention it. But I think that the key in this game is going to be your veterans stepping up. Those two guys, Boots, Boots and Wade. Can your guards, the staples of this team, the guys – play good ball, and help you win a massive game to probably secure you in the NCAA tournament. You know, you're the more motivated team, which is huge. You know, Kentucky's, I think, locked up a three seed, it looks like. They have a chance not at a two maybe, but I just – I think you're the more motivated team. You are playing for your postseason hopes and dreams. They've locked theirs up. So all you can really do is go play your game. And I think last time you played Kentucky, you played their game. You know, you kind of you sped it up a little bit. And you beat them at their game, which I don't think is going to happen very often. And I do think that Texas A&M, especially Boots, was able to get to the rim a lot in that game. And I think that Kentucky's rim protection has gotten better. Their defense has gotten better as a whole. It's still not great, but it's better. And for a team like that Kentucky team, for a, a defense to just be better is enough for them to be really good because their offense is incredible. So I think you beat you beat Kentucky at their game last game. You know, you, it was quick. It was a quick game. I think if you want to win this game, you have to slow down the game. You got you got to try and slow it down. I don't think you're going to win this game. You know, speeding it up. I just don't think that's reality here. So I think if you slow down the basketball game and your veterans play well, you got a chance here. But, I mean, in reality, you're fighting for playoff hopes. I mean, this is this is a Kentucky team that's playing really good basketball. They beat Tennessee and Knoxville on Saturday. I think they've won uh, four games straight. They're playing, or maybe five straight. They're playing really good basketball at a good time. But so are you. These are two basketball teams playing their best basketball at the most important time of the season, and that is always incredibly important and, and and helps the team. So can Texas A&M win this game? Sure they can, uh, but they've got to play well. They've got to show up. They have got to play their game. They have got to make free throws, get to the free throw line and make them. What was Texas A&M from the free throw line yesterday? Let's see. I'm pulling this up. They were – maybe it wasn't that bad. Now I'm trying to – oh, 27 to 37. I mean, I'll take that. Especially when your opponent goes fifty-seven percent, I'll, I'll take winning the 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 free throw battle by sixteen percent. I'll take that all day long and making about fifteen more in them. I'll take that all day long. Make your free throws. I also think that Texas A&M did a good job for the most part making the free throws late when they mattered against Ole Miss. If you want to have a chance in this game, if you're going to take thirty-seven free throws, which I don't know about that, I think maybe closer to thirty is probably realistic. You got to make 23, 24 of them. I think that's, that's just the only 25. You know, that's the way that you're going to have a chance in this basketball game. So this is going to be a fun one. I'll be there. Can't wait to be there. It's going to be a really fun basketball game. It's going to be fun to get to see the Aggies play in person. Um, any AM fans, you see me there? Come holler. I'll be there. Um, 
in the little press area. So I'm excited for this ball game, ladies and gentlemen. I think that um, I mean, am I predicting the Aggies to win this one? No, but I think they're gonna I think they're gonna give it their best shot against a really good basketball team. And I think they've done a good job over these last two weeks, really working their way back into this. So fun basketball game coming up. Even more fun baseball series. And we'll talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as the Armada. This top-seeded team is a hard is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after winning their first season in the after. Let me read that again. <laughs> it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big Twelve. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com today. So, baseball series, SEC series opener coming up against the Florida Gators. This is going to be a fun one. I'm really stoked about all this. I, it's going to be tough to watch with the um, SEC tournament. Going to do the best I can to probably watch on my phone. But... You've got your starters for Florida. You've got Cade Fisher, lefty. you got Liam Peterson, righty. And then you got Cags, Jack Caglione, uh, another lefty. So two lefties, two southpaws. Fisher, the guy we're going to see today, 16 innings, 7.56 ERA, four walks, 27 Ks, um, only two homers. So he's given up a lot of you know base hits, singles, doubles. Um, because, you know, his ERA is almost eight and he's struck out 27 and he's only given up two homers. So 22 hits, it'll do that. Three hit by pitches. So seven free bases allowed. But this kid, you know, the e, I think the ERA, I've watched him pitch. I think the ERA is a little bit in, in, uh, inflated. I, I think he's a pretty solid pitcher. So with the 27 hits to me, or the 22 hits, 27 strikeouts says to me, is take advantage of your pitch. You're going to get 22 hits and 16 innings. You're going to get a pitch. You're going to get a pitch. That is a fact. You're going to get one good look. Take advantage of it. Don't miss. You know, that's the key. Sit on your pitch, whether it's a fastball, whether you're looking for um, off speed. Most people are going to sit fastball. If you get a center cut fastball, fastball on the inside corner, fastball on the inside corner, drive it. If you get a pitch you like, don't miss it. I think that's going to be a key in this game, um, in, in that game. And then Liam Peterson is the righty you're going to see in game two. 16 innings, 11 hits, nine earned runs, 22 strikeouts, um, four homers, nine walks, um, and he's hit one. So 10 free bases allowed in 16 innings. Here, I mean, you know, it's kind of the the same thing. I mean – a couple more homers, you know, that means that means he's probably more liable to leave one over the plate. If you get your pitch, drive it. And then uh, Cags, Jack Caglione, who's going to be a star in the MLB, going to be a star in college baseball this year. He, uh, 1.8 ERA so far, 15 innings pitched, five hits, eight walks, 27 strikeouts. So a few more, um, you know, a, a, a few walks for the lefty. He's going to run it up, 97, 98. He can... He can sling it a little bit. So I've watched him pitch. You know, he can be a bit erratic at times, but he can also paint corners at times. So it's kind of like, which which Jack Caglione are you going to get today? Um, that's the pitching matchups. I, I think that Texas a and be able to get hits off all these guys. I think these are all good pitchers, but I think Texas A&M is going to be able to get hits off them and turn those into runs. Then you got the guys at the dish. You got Colby Shelton. I believe he transferred to Florida from Alabama, some other SEC school. 
He's already got nine homers on the year, and he um, is um, hitting 333. So this kid is seeing the ball well right now. Live on the corners, keep it down in the zone. Uh, he has a healthy amount of strikeouts, so don't be afraid. You know, flip him some off speed. Keep the pitches on the corners. Keep the pitches in the bottom of the zone. You don't want to leave anything center cut with uh, this kid at the dish because he will punish it. He will. He will not let you miss it. So that's a hitter you don't want to miss middle middle on. And then same with Cags. Cags only has five homers in the year. He is hitting four twelve which actually for him is MLB prospect is good to see because, you know, you didn't want to see a, ooh, a lot of home runs, not a ton of batting average guy. 412, five homers. He hits baseballs very far when he gets a hold of them. So it's the same thing. The guys that are going to hit homers keep the ball out of the middle of the strike zone. If you can keep the ball out of the middle of the strike zone, I think you can get these guys out. Now, yes. Sometimes if you put a pitch in the bottom of the zone on the outside corner and they, and they uh, slap it down the line for a double, base hit, tip your cap. Okay, good piece of hitting. We'll take a single or a double any day over a home run. So that's Caglione. That's kind of what you could do with him. And then Ty Evans, he's batting 356 in the year, four homers. Um, so that's something to pay attention to, a dude that's hitting the ball well right now, getting ahead. So I think that is – you know, something a, pl a player that you don't want to let get hot in the weekend because he can put together a lot of he can string together hits. And then the last thing about this Florida team, they've been hit by 34 pitches. So they're gonna try and step into pitches. You know, they're gonna try and get hit. They like to get hit. That's how they're gonna get on base. If they do that, you know, don't if they're leaning shoulders, they'll stay on the corner, stay outside. Um, you know. Come in on them. If they're up on the plate, come in on them. Get some cheap strikes on pitches that are in on the shoulder. So um, those are the players to watch out for pitching, uh, pitching the guys that are going to start for the Gators and the guys that haven't hit the ball well. I think the Aggies win this series, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, I think the undefeated streak ends, but I do think they're going to win it. I think they're going to win it 2-1. A lot of people have been talking on Twitter, a and doesn't play anybody, yada, yada. I don't – well, go prove it. Go – Tell them to be quiet and win two ball games against a really good Florida team that has had a shaky start to the season, but is a solid baseball team. Go win this series, and you're putting yourself in a really good spot. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here this week. Going to be at the SEC tournament, hopefully bring you some fun content from there. Hope everybody enjoys the basketball game, enjoys all the baseball games this weekend. Really appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you next week.